Let me ask you a question. Why do all cars look the same? The same silhouette? The same general design? Welcome to the world of the Hi-Fi Z, which has not only ripped up the rule book, but blasted it into the 25th century. So can this take on the likes of the Porsche Taycan and really reinvent the Hyper GT car? Well, let's find out. We know you love the Fully Charged Show, so why not come to one of our global live shows in 2023 and 2024? The next shows are in the UK, specifically Farnborough and Harrogate. Get your tickets today. They've gone full on bananas and decided to actually make their concept car and put it on the road into this production version we see here today. Now the X had a lot of features, a lot of quirks in it, but this, their pure electric hypercar GT, has really upped the tech, but also some small issues as well. Now imagine for a second that you're a car company. You have an unlimited budget, so you go to the car supermarket and you buy all of the best things. A very fast top speed, LED lights, massive wheels, big Brembo brakes, LiDAR. Then you go to the accountants and the engineers, they say, mm, maybe not, you know, the budget this, engineering that. At Hi-Fi, I think, they were taking a day off because everything they've asked for is in this car. It has everything. Now let's look at the front of the Hi-Fi Z because it looks like it's from Japan. There's a lot of Nissan GTR vibes for those Gran Turismo fans out there. It looks unbelievable. You have these massive 22 inch wheels which come as standard and behind these are those Brembo four pot brakes. Coming down the side, we have the two doors and these are suicide doors. They've also got LEDs in here and this one can be programmed to say words. So you can say, hello cyclist, as the door opens. Now it does have a low drag coefficient of 0.27 and the back end here is a bit of a mess. It's a bit of a jumble of lights. There's LEDs down here, across here, around here, over here. So for a hypercar GT, you would expect this to have a pretty decent boot space, but for a car that's over five meters long, Come on, button. This has a paltry 316 litres of boot space. Yeah, the backseat occupants have a lot of space, but you can only really fit two bags of luggage in here, and I think that's a bit of an issue. On the interior of the car, you do feel like that futuristic look has been continued in here. However, one of my biggest frustrations is push button closed doors. Just give me a handle, please. I just want a handle. Uh, that's not the only thing which annoys me in the door. Uh, it's also got these uh, touch button uh, controls for the, the windows, which you've got no tactile feel whatsoever. That is quite frustrating. However, all of the material quality in here is very high quality. I've got these lovely purple seat belts. That, my school uniform used to be that color. And then it's all about this tech and the system in here. I've actually got three screens around me. You can only see one, but I've got an HUD in front of me. I've got this 15.05 inch AMOLED screen here, and I've got the screen here because you can't see out the back, so you need the camera there. Now, I've got a lovely control down here that controls my uh, drive mode, reverse neutral drive. That's quite easy. Now, the screen is very interesting because this is the first screen to use something called the Unreal Engine in displaying the graphics of the car. Now. Unreal Engine is something that computer games use to make things look even more realistic. And I'm really happy to see it move over into the car world. So very impressive tech of all of these features in here. It says our frunk is open. It's not, maybe we haven't closed it properly. Um, and it's got like, your usual maps, you know, navigation, your menus for your heat seater, ventilation, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it's also got this Hi-Fi Go, this system which listens to every command that you give it it's also always on so it's even coming up with the english that i'm saying right now which is a little bit odd the other thing is because it's got no dash here for uh, speedo the speedo is actually up here and even if this whole system crashes we were told this will stay in place because it's on a different system again way beyond my understanding and knowledge but impressive tech nonetheless. Now this is a place that I can really enjoy because I have loads and loads of legroom. The front seat is set up for me driving and in there I've got a lot of legroom. However, the floor is actually quite high. It's quite a flat floor, quite high. And so my legs are a bit like this and the seats are quite low. 
because the roof's low. So there's a few compromises in here, which I think kind of dent the experience slightly. However, most people are gonna be driving this in that seat. Probably won't have many passengers here, maybe just a couple of kids. The car comes in both four seat and five seat versions. We've got the five seat version. Now in here, what features do I get? I can close my door with a button up here. Again, electronic, slightly irritating. But what's most impressive is in here because not only have I got my customary cup holders, but I've got a six, bleh, six inch screen here and I can control the music, I can control the air conditioning. It's very responsive. I can control the angle of the seat, uh, air conditioning in here, heat seater. There's a lot packed in this little screen. Whether you can actually use it to watch uh, TV or something, probably a bit small for that. You'll be playing on your phone anyway. But again, lots of tech packed in quite a small space. The other thing I'd like to point out is, again, that lack of rear window does make it feel a little bit claustrophobic in here because you've only got this small window here, your window here, and that's why they've got the glass roof because that really helps with the feeling of space. But back here, it does feel a bit unusual, should we say. Now there's a lot of little frustrations about this car. I'm sure if I lived with it for a month, I'd get used to it. But as a new user, there's a lot of little things which kind of are a bit annoying. The key, again, the key. Last time with the Hi-Fi X, the key was very frustrating. Why not just have a simple open, close, open boot? No, it's double click this, double click that, and you don't really know what it does. Am I gonna lock the car? Double click, don't know, no. That one, no. That one, no. You see, you do double click here, double click here and the boot opens. So I, I don't, there's no rhyme or reason. Yes, I could probably learn all the little tricks, but it's quite frustrating. Another one is these doors, which look fantastic, really easy to open. But even if someone was standing there, like our cameraman, it will stop opening. Oh, it doesn't, doesn't this time. If I'm standing here, now of course that helps if there's cyclists going past, but sometimes it's just like, let me have more control over my door. Don't make everything electronic because it just gets a little bit frustrating. And you know, tech does go wrong sometimes and we've been playing about with this car today and some things don't always work. So definitely not perfect. When you first get into this car, it's really hard to know how this car is gonna drive. Is it gonna be that hypercar GT? Is it gonna be like a sports car? Is it gonna be like a massive luxury saloon? Well, of course, because it's hi-fi, it's all of those. If you want it to be a hooligan on the motorway, you do zero to 60 in 3.8 seconds, which is ridiculously fast for a car which weighs over 2,500 kilos. If you're gliding along it, it's really supple. The feeling is, the steering feeling is lovely, but the suspension is sublime. It's got the air suspension, it's reading the road and adjusting it all the time. It just really is a very confident and fantastic car, a great all-rounder. Now you would think a car which is so big and pretty heavy would be not very nice to drive around the corners, but the whole feeling of this car is very much like a sports car. They've really captured the feeling. And I think they've done a great job in just how it feels on the road. The steering wheel is really good. It feels great. It's got these plus and minus paddles here, which puts it into sports mode. So which means we're even more responsive. You put, push the minus button, it goes into comfort mode. It's pretty cool. It's not quite like a flappy paddle on a Ferrari, but you know, I quite like it. Lovely metal feeling as well. Now the comfort in this car, you can't forget about the comfort because these seats are like racing seats. They're very low down. They hug you in the sides and they just feel both comfortable. They're really soft in the back, but then they're quite grippy when you're going a bit mad around the corners. So again, Hi-Fi doing everything very, very well. Two electric motors, one in the front, one in the back and they put out about 494 kilowatts of power and a massive 810 newton meters of torque. Again, my heads up display is very clear. It's showing me my speed, how much range and the direction on the sat nav and the drive mode. That's very clear, very simple. That's all I really need from that. So is this a luxury car? Is it a hypercar? Is it a GT car? It's everything, it's a bit of everything. Hi-Fi in their usual way have combined everything to make a new category of car, and I really like it for that. Mm -hmm. 
My question is this, who is gonna buy one of these? Honestly, I don't know, but I know there's been a few thousand buyers already here in China, and it's gonna do reasonably well on the market. However, I really think this is more important because this is the pinnacle of Chinese design right now. The pinnacle of Chinese technology right now. And it's all in one car, in one package. My question is, how are Hi-Fi ever gonna to top this next?